dear students i would like to start with fourth part of my video based on the important question paper discussion on the subject renewable energy sources today i am going to discuss the important question from module 2 i am going to focus on the first question paper that is happened in the year of march 2022 first of all i would like to share you uh, the question paper uh, and uh, you can go through once based upon that i am going to discuss uh, the important questions accordingly so i am going to share my screen to everybody so please refer uh, the particular ppt i think it's visible to everybody fine okay so i'm going to discuss about uh, important questions uh, in the question paper of march 22nd first of all please go through all the questions which i have highlighted here uh, here uh, so first of all uh, let me discuss question number 3a so please refer uh, question number 3a okay this question let me discuss with a schematic diagram, explain the working of Stirling engine. This is based on solar thermal application. I would like to discuss what we mean by the Stirling engine. How does it operate? All right. So what you are supposed to do is you need to explain uh, what is a uh, Stirling engine, parabolic dish Stirling engine with the help of this block diagram. You need to mark what is the importance of solar collector, uh, then uh, how the heat energy is uh, generated from the solar collector. Then you have to explain the importance of superheater, how efficiently it is going to uh, recover uh, the steam. And you have to explain about the steam generator, uh, then uh, how the steam generator runs a uh, electric generator. From the electric generator, uh, the electricity will be produced. Also, you have to mention about the condenser and how the cooling action will be taken place with the help of cooling tower. And uh, you have to explain with the closed loop system with a neat block diagram and the importance of solar pumping system also. Well, this is solar water pump for um, uh, recovery, cooling system, uh, for cooling purpose. So you have to explain uh, this block diagram first. Later, you have to explain what are the major components. So as you can see the slide, the major components are divided into three, like a solar dish concentrator, uh, then power conversion unit, and a tracking system. So these are the major components. Later on, what you can do is you have to elaborate. How does it work? So based on the flow, you can explain. So it works mainly based on the Briotan cycle of mechanical engineering, the temperature you have to mention, uh, then how it is going to uh, convert the steam uh, steam into uh, the mechanical energy, okay? How the turbine is going to produce mechanical energy from the steam, that is called a Briotan cycle. Possible, in a, you know, every type of, uh, like a gas turbine, it follows the Briotan cycle. You can explain uh, the Briotan cycle with the help of uh, PV for the pressure and vo pressure voltage, pressure uh, volume and uh, uh, temperature entropy. TS means the temperature, S means entropy. This curve also you can mention. No need to go in elaborate manner, but uh, the uh, the diagram you can uh, mention. So uh, so uh, the temperature Q means tem temperature heating. Q out means heat out. So you can uh, note on this particular graph and you can explain. Fine. All right. So this is the way how to answer this. If you uh, mention these points, that is a lot more sufficient. Now let me come back to other question. Yes. Okay. Now we can see the another question that is 3A. Discuss about different solar cell material. This question is of solar photovoltaic. In solar photovoltaic system, solar energy will be converted into electricity. So I would like to explain uh, what are the different type of solar cell materials available. Usually, a uh, solar cell is made up of silicon. There are different combinations, monocrystalline material, multicrystalline, polycrystalline, amorphous, and thin film. What you can do is prepare a comparative studies. Uh, so first you speak about monocrystalline silicon, the peculiarity, okay, how it is uh, constructed. Uh, then uh, diagrams and all it is beyond the scope. Drawing the diagram in the examination not possible. Uh, then multicrystalline, importance of multicrystalline. You can see this kind of material. So what about the performance? Okay. Uh, then polycrystalline. Why it is called polycrystalline? It is also known as uh, polysilicon. Okay. Uh, then uh, the specialty of polysilicon uh, material you can explain. Amorphous material. If you want, you can explain the chemical structure like this. How the bonding is taken place. That you can explain. But uh, these things and all, it is very difficult to draw in the examination. Okay. That you know. Uh, in seminar presentation and all, we can do it. But uh, how to make out in the examination? No worries. Then amorphous silicon, you have to elaborate it. 
then possible to prepare a comparative study. So uh, from this comparative study, we can uh, compare the efficiency. See, if I talk about uh, monocrystalline, it shows highest efficiency. Uh, then uh, you have to mention about the technology, what kind of technology it is used. Uh, then the theoretical efficiency and practical efficiency can be compared. If you can draw this table, that will be really great. Okay, but uh, remember uh, many things we cannot remember, but whichever you feel uh, regarding the lifespan, efficiency, okay, those things you can explain uh, very clearly. Hope you can manage the particular answer well. So please pause the video and please make a note of this. Definitely, if you write the notes, definitely no issue. You can directly uh, write in the examination without any doubt. Otherwise, again, taking photocopier and photocopy reading again. Instead of that, you can write once. Please pause the video and write once. That's my suggestion. Uh, let me move on to question number 3C. With a neat schematic diagram, explain the solar water heating system and the solar pond power generation. Eight marks. Now, it is divided into two. I, if I write uh, like a solar water heating system, I'll be avoiding uh, four marks. Uh, for another side, that is uh, pond power generation. Solar pond, uh, you will be getting another four marks. So let me see what the basics of water heating system and pond power system. How to write it? That I want to tell you. The diagram is most important. So let me take you how to answer this. Uh, as you can see the solar pond, so you can see the different layers. You have to highlight it the different layers. See, uh, low salt content cool water, salt gra uh, gradient layers, high salt concentration of brine. It is mainly used for like uh, electricity generation, uh, then desalination, etc. All the process will be carrying out by using the solar pond. Okay. Uh, so you have to draw this particular diagram. Later, what you can do is you have to elaborate. It's a method of uh, harnessing solar energy. Uh, that's a pool of water that collect, uh, collect and store the energy. It will collect, collect and store the energy. Okay. Uh, each layers are filled with a different density of water. That is another specialty. Uh, you know, it's a low, lower cost technology. It's not that much as effort, affordable and not so cost uh, effect. Uh, so, uh, like, it's not so expensive. Then top layer has less salt content. Different layers you are seeing, no. Uh, I think uh, I have already shown you the diagram. You can see different, different layers uh, because to store the energy. Bottom layer has the highest salt concentration. Up to 100 degrees Celsius can be stored. Temperature can be stored by using the solar pond. Why solar pond is required? To extract it. Also, you can generate electricity. Here you can see the diagram. Uh, based on the diagram, you can say that you can produce electricity as well. So this is regarding the solar pond. Simple explanation is sufficient. Fine. You will be getting four marks. So next is all about the solar uh, water heating system. So you can explain the block diagram. See, uh, mainly we require a solar collector. Uh, then we require like uh, uh, the, there is a uh, heat exchanger is required. Uh, then you can see the uh, water tank. Okay, so pumping everything should be you have to mention. Uh, then you have to mention about what is a solar uh, water heating system. Briefly, you have to explain. See, uh, so the purpose of water heating system. What are the major components? So we require a circulating fluid. Majorly, we are using distilled water as a circulating fluid. We need uh, anti freezing fluid as well. Okay, uh, so we have to use a double wall heat exchanger for improving the efficiency. All right. Similarly, you have to elaborate about we are mainly using the natural convection process. Uh, also, you have, if you want, you can explain the two type of solar water heating system. One is active, another one is passive. Uh, because four marks questions only. Okay, four marks, you, you need to elaborate briefly. You don't go for uh, detailed elaboration. If you go for detailed elaboration, so you cannot focus on the other type of uh, other kind other questions, okay? Because you need to answer all the questions, right? So if any any diagram, whichever you comfortable, no, you can uh, adopt. In passive system, it is divided into batch type system and the therm thermospion system. Any anything you can explain. At least one block diagram you have to elaborate. General block diagram is also all right. Okay, fine. Anyway, uh, active solar solar water heating system is not required. At least if you want, you can write in brief why it is called the active solar water heating system. That's all. Now, let me move on to question number 4A. What are the advantages and disadvantages of concentrating collectors over flat collect collectors? That is very important. So, let me show you the explanation. Uh, you can see the flat, uh, flat plate collectors. It's suitable for the low temperature application where... Um, the concentrating type is suitable for the high temperature application. That is a that is a major uh, difference. Uh, similarly, cost you can compare with uh, cost effectiveness. Then areas of application you can compare. Uh, then based on the working fluid, that's also important. Based on the working fluid, you can compare. 
Okay, so kindly go through the slides, uh, then uh, base temperature, uh, then you can work in fluid. All the parameters has to be cost, cost also you can uh, take care into consideration. So based upon that, you can make a comparative analysis, fine. So that you are expected to write in the examination. Okay, that, that is the answer for this particular question. So please refer question number 4B, that is the advantage and disadvantages of PV system, advantage. So what are the advantages of PV system? You can tell about uh, modularity, uh, then high payback, uh, the low payback period. Okay, within a short span of time, you can uh, get the revenue. Okay, payback period span is very less. Similarly, other one I can say that geographical independence. You can keep the solar panel anywhere uh, across either northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. But there are variations. But however, it's okay. You can establish the solar power plant. Uh, there is no issues. Then it's more cost effective. Uh, then uh, plenty of availability of material. All the things you can say about the advantages. If I talk about the disadvantages, poor con power conversion efficiency. If I talk about the efficiency, it is around 20 percentage on an average. Uh, then, uh, then co the material. The uh, cost of material is very high. Okay. Uh, then uh, the manufacturing, solar cell manufacturing availability is very less. Okay. The te uh, technical know-how that's a problem. How to extract the energy. Uh, similarly. We can say about uh, it depends on uh, the weather conditions, intermittency. It is having high intermittent uh, nature. Uh, it is not high intermittency. Uh, then reliability, poor reliability. Those things you can uh, explain. Fine. So you can uh, enlist the following points. See, look at this. Uh, advantage, clean, uh, noiseless operation, modularity, easy to install, independent operation. Like that, you can prepare the checklist. So when it comes to the drawbacks, so mainly uh, weather dependence, intermittence, uh, less reliable, uh, high initial investment required, uh, poor efficiency, additional investment of components, okay, uh, power conditioning equipments are required. These are the pros and cons of solar uh, photovoltaic system. So let me move on to last question. Uh, uh, so you can see the last question. Uh, with a neat diagram, explain the IB characteristics of a solar cell. So, you know, IB characteristics means the current uh, voltage characteristics of a uh, solar photovoltaic uh, system. I'm going to show you uh, the IB characteristics. So, all of you, please pay that attention. IB uh, is one of the performance. You can check the performance uh, parameters. Look at this. Yes, I'm going to plot the IB characteristics. Yeah. So, before plotting the IB characteristics, I request you to uh, draw this particular diagram. So, we have a solar panel. Uh, we'll be connecting a load and this will be keeping in the sun uh, on in, under the sun okay under the sunlight okay uh, then you are varying the resistance okay with the uh, uh, maximum to minimum you are going to vary whenever you are varying the resistance you will be noting on the current and voltage current will be noted down then voltage also will be noted down so you are going to plot current in ampere and uh, voltage that is measured in volts so you'll be getting the curve okay uh, if you draw this curve, the shape of the curve will be non-linear. Okay, that is called the IB characteristics, current voltage characteristics. So, if I talk about the IB characteristics, uh, the shape will be like this. Uh, current will be uh, plotted in the y-axis, where voltage is in the x-axis. So, we are having a, uh, we are getting a non-linear curve. If I focus on here, this is your, uh, the maximum power point, the maximum power point, this area, at this particular point, you are able to get the maximum power. This point is called as maximum power point, MPP. You can call it as MPP. Also, if you elaborate the IV curve uh, towards Y-axis, you are able to get the short circuit current. It is called the ISC. Uh, short circuit current is nothing but uh, when uh, the two terminals of PV panels are shorted, there is a maximum current flow in between the terminals. That is referred as short circuit current ISC. Uh, when uh, the PV panel is kept open, if you measure the voltage at that in instant, I'm able to get the maximum voltage. It is known as open circuited voltage, also no load voltage. All right. Uh, so these parameters I can estimate by using the IV curve. So these are the importance of IV curve. I hope you got my point. So that is a lot more sufficient about IV curve. Okay, so please elaborate it. Your explanation is uh, very much crucial. Uh, you can elaborate it for uh, uh, like eight marks. It's almost one and a half pages you can write. It. Circuit diagram, uh, then waveforms you are drawing, uh, then how you are getting the waveforms, that your preparation of table, IV, 
some values you can put and find out. Then what is ISC? What is DOC? Uh, then what is uh, MPP? Maximum power points. Those things, if you can elaborate, that's really great. All right. So these are the things uh, which are required uh, to answer well uh, in this particular question paper in the year of March 22nd. Uh, if the questions repeated in the same fashion, easily you can uh, score good marks. So please go through those particular points. Write it separately. My, my advice is you please write it separately. So definitely you will get a lot of confidence to face the examination. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.